Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 165. Day 3165. 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 165. We, work, we are working on the practice test number 2. Practice test number 2 that you will find at the very end of the book on page number 493. We will work on problem number 15 and 16. Two problems that appear on page 493. Make sure the book is in front of you. Open the book, turn to page 493, and let's work together, shall we? Problem number 15 tells us that uh, A, it tells us that A is less than B, which in turn we are told is less than 0. In other words, they are both negative. You understand? And the question simply is, which of the following, which of the following, must B, and this is where you have to pause and, and, and pay attention because in most cases, most of the time, they simply say which of the following must be true. Here it's a little different. It says which of the following must be positive. Which of the following must be positive. And the word, of course, here is must. We have to find, if you're going to claim that something is positive, it must be positive all the time, not in some instances. Do you understand? Let's get going. Answer choice A says, a minus B. A minus B. So why don't we, to make our life simple, instead of doing it theoretically, which we'll do also, we'll, do, we'll mix it up. We'll do it theoretically, conceptually, and we'll also do it with numbers. Let's, let's plug in numbers here. Let's make our life simpler. Let's make A equal to negative 2. And we know negative 2 is less than negative 1. And we know that in turn is less than 0. So if that's the case, we will have A equal to negative 2 minus a negative 1, which will end up giving us negative 2 pop and a positive 1, which of course ends in a negative 1. Well, there we go. We found, we found one instance where a minus b is not positive. It says which of the following must be positive. As, soon as, as long as we find even just one instance when it's not positive, it's not going to work. We're looking for something that has to be positive all the time. Let's look at b. b says, b says a squared minus b squared. Watch what happens here. a squared minus b squared Again, we can do it with our numbers first, or we can do it in theory. Let's, let's do it theoretically first. A is a negative quantity. How do we know A is a negative quantity? Because we are told A is less than 0. A is less than B, and B in turn is less than 0, which means they are both negative. So if A is negative, if A is negative, when we have a negative quantity and when we square it, it becomes positive. A squared will always be positive. A square of a negative quantity is always positive. Are you with me so far? Similarly, b is a negative quantity and therefore b squared will always be positive. So we have a positive quantity minus, minus another positive quantity and of course that does not itself, that does not in itself necessarily mean that their difference is positive. For example, for example 7 minus 4 of course is positive but 7 minus 14 of course is not positive. That in itself does not mean the difference is going to be positive. The difference can only be positive Difference is only this difference between these two quantities can only be positive if a squared if a squared is greater than b squared, which it is. A squared here here, a squared is here, a squared is greater than b squared, and therefore their difference will always be positive. How do we know that a squared is greater than b uh, b squared? It's right here. You see, look. Because A is less than B and they are both negative, because A is less than B, they are both negative, which means this, if, if A, if, for example, if B is negative 2, A can make be less than, let's make it negative 2 and a half, negative 2 and a quarter, negative 3, whatever. It's a negative quantity, but by the time you square it, by the time you square it, it becomes positive 9 minus a negative 2 squared. Again, by the time you square it, it just becomes, it becomes bigger. Even though A is less than B, 
even though a is less than b, but because they are both negative and because a is less than b, therefore when you square it, negative 3, negative 3 is less than negative 2, but negative 3 squared, negative 3 squared, but negative 3 squared is going to be more than negative 2 squared. As you can see, 9 is more than 4. Their difference will always be positive because of the fact that a is less than b. Because a is less than b, therefore a squared will be more than b squared. Do you understand? Because a falls to the left of the more of a... Here is the number line is 0. If, if b is here, a is somewhere to the left. Where, where or how far it is from to the left, it doesn't matter. It's somewhere to the left and therefore it's a bigger negative number if you want to think it that way in the absolute term. In absolute term, a is bigger than b. So it's a bigger negative number which we, when you square it becomes bigger. So it will always be positive. It will always be positive. We did two instances. We did two instances. We did negative 2 and negative 1 with the second instance. If a happens to be, if a happens to be, if a happens to be negative 3 and b happens to be negative 2, if a happens to be negative 3 and b happens to be negative 2, as you can see, negative 3 squared, which is 9, it's always going to be more than negative 4 squared, or negative 2 squared rather. And therefore, because a squared is bigger than b squared, because a squared is bigger than b squared, therefore a squared minus b squared will always be positive. Therefore, statement 2 is also true. Oh, no, statement 2 is true. I shouldn't say also true, because I don't... We just established that statement A did not work. The statement A did not work. The statement A... We, we showed that it's not always positive, because we found one instance when it was not. Let's move on to C. C is very straightforward also. C is actually very simple. C simply says A times B. Well, A times B, A is a negative quantity. B is a negative quantity. So if A is negative and B is negative, if you take two negative quantities and multiply them, negative times negative, of course it's always going to be positive. It's always going to be positive. We don't have to worry about plugging in numbers. It's just, it's not necessary. It would be silly to plug in numbers. You can clearly see negative times negative is positive. Negative 3 times negative 2 will be positive 6, obviously. C works. C also works. So, so far we have two winners. We have B and C so far. So, so far we have established that the answers are B, C, and we'll keep on going until we find more. Let's look at D. D says, let's erase all of this thing, we don't need, so we are done with C, let's erase all of this thing, let's not make it crowded. Just keep in mind that they are both negative quantities. D says, A squared times B. Watch what happens. If A is negative, if A is negative, then A squared will be positive. And B is negative. There we go. So positive times negative, of course, will always be negative. We don't have to plug in numbers again. It will always be negative. And the question was, which of the following is always positive? Which of the following must be positive? We are not looking for something that must... If A, if A had said which of the following must always be negative, then this would be the answer. We are looking for something which must be positive. It's not positive. It's actually negative all the time. D does not work. What about E? Again, let's do it separately. E, e says A squared B plus A B squared. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Again, since A is negative, since A is negative, A squared will be a positive quantity. And B is negative. So here we have positive times negative. It doesn't matter what the quantities are. The point here is A squared is always positive. B is negative. Therefore, positive times negative. This will give us a negative quantity. Let's move on here. A we know is negative. And B squared it will always be positive. B squared will always be positive. Do you understand? Therefore, negative times positive is going to be negative. So here we have two quantities. A negative quantity and another negative quantity. What happens when you add two negative quantities? When we add two negative quantities, we always get negative. They were not asking which of the following must always be negative. That's not what it's saying. It said which of the following must must always be positive. This will always be negative. It does not work. So that's it. Those are the two answer choices. B and C. B and C. If you're curious about the percentile, it's 58%. Yes. Fifty-eight percent of the people got this question right. About three-fifth, little under three-fifth. Let's move on to number sixteen.
number 16. Number 16, we have a picture and again it will help if you have the book in front of you. So let's first draw the picture as it is given to us. So we have a, we have a picture frame that looks like this. So far so good. So this is our picture frame right here. That This is our picture frame. A, B, C, D. This is our picture. And around this we have a frame. We are told that the length of the picture, length of the picture is X inches. X inches. We are also told that the length of the, rather the width of the frame, not the length, the width of the frame is also X inches. And that is all we are told. That is all we are told. Or oh, we are told one more thing. We are also told, let's, let's write down what it is. We are told, we are told that the area, area of the picture, area of the picture is equal to, area of the picture is this. This is our picture, you understand? This is the picture. And we are told that the area of that picture is same, is equal to the area of the frame, area of the frame. So that's one thing we know. You must read the problem yourself, you understand? The problem is very long and I'm not going to put down exactly the way it is, but I'm just going to tell you what it is. We also told that the frame, we also told that the frame is one inch wide, one inch wide on all sides on all sides. So let's make a note of it in the picture itself. Now we know that the frame is one inch wide on all sides which which means distance right this distance right here is one inch. This distance right here is one inch. This distance here up here from here to here is one inch. And this distance here is one inch. What else do you get to? That's it, that's all we know. That's all, it is to, that's all we are told. And here's the question. The question simply is, for what value, for what value of x, for what value of x is, is the, is the area of the area of the picture equal to the area of the frame? I'm not going to rewrite it. I'm not going to rewrite it because I already wrote it on the top. It says for what for what value of x is this true? Given the fact that the frame is one inch wide on all sides, given the fact that the length of the picture itself is the same as the width of the frame. The length of the picture is the same as the width of the picture. This is what we are told. One more time. We are told that the length of the picture, you see, that's the length of the picture, that is the same as the width of the picture. That's the first thing we are told. Secondly, we are told that the frame is one inch wide on all sides. Those are the only two bits of information we are given. And the question simply is, if that were to be true, then what would the value of x have to be? Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. We need, to, we need the room, so everything has to go. Let's start with the area of the picture. Let's start with the area of the picture. The area of the picture, of course, as always, is length times width. What is the length of the picture? The length of the picture is right here, it's given to us. Right here is, is the length of the picture. And we are told that it is x inches. So the length is x inches. That was the simple part. How wide is the picture? How wide is the picture? The picture is from here to here. Okay. And this distance from here to here is one inch. This distance from here to here is one inch. And we also know that the entire part is x inches. If the distance from one end of the frame to the other end of the frame is x inches, and we have one inch of frame on this side and one inch of frame on this side, the picture must be, the, the width must be, the width of the picture must be x minus 2. It must be x minus 2. That is your width, as x minus 2. We are done with that one, okay? Let's move on 
to the area of the frame. Let's move on to the area of the frame. Let's work on let's work on this rectangle on the top. This rectangle that you see on the top here. Let me put it on a different color. And if I keep putting stuff on it, it's gonna get soon it's gonna get too crowded and we'll have to erase something. So this is what we're looking at here. This rectangle right here. Well, how long is this rectangle? Well, this rectangle is X inch long. It is X inches long. And what is this distance from here to here? Well, that's the width of the frame. And width of the frame, we were told, is 1. And are you able to see? Are you able to see that? Let me erase all the, all the rest here because it's getting too crowded. Are you able to see that we have another? Other, other rectangle exactly like that on the bottom, right here, exactly like this, same rectangle on the bottom, same exact situation on the bottom. You see that this rectangle is also, this rectangle is also x inches long and one inch wide. So this is x inches. The area of this rectangle is x inch square. The area of this rectangle is x inch squared. I'm going to stop saying the units now. It's just x, x plus x is 2x so far. Now let's talk about this rectangle. Let's talk about this rectangle right here. This rectangle right here. What about this rectangle? That rectangle is again from here to here we are told. Remember we were told this, the length of the picture is x inches. So this rectangle is also x inches long and one inch wide. From here to here is one inch. So the area of this rectangle is also x inches. And so is the area of this rectangle. The frame is made up of four rectangles. The frame is made up of four rectangles. All of them are x by one. x inches long and one inch wide. The frame is made up of four equal rectangles each one of them x inch long and one inch wide. In other words, the area of the frame is simply, there is made up of four rectangles, each one of them is x inches long and one inch wide. Well, four times x times one is simply four x. There you go, and they have to be equal. That's what we're done. Let's open the parentheses, x times x is x squared, x times negative two is gonna be negative two x, has to equal four x, Let's bring the 4x on this side, so we end up with x squared minus 4x, or rather, when we bring 4x to this side, in other words, we subtract 4x from both sides, we're going to end up with 6x equals 0. Here we have x squared, here we have x, let's take out x as a common factor. If we take out x as a common factor, here we're left with x minus, and 6x divided by x is going to give us negative 6x, and negative 6, it has to equal to 0. That implies that either, either x is equal to 0 or x minus 6 has to equal to 0. Obviously x cannot be 0. How can x be 0? Because x represents the length of the picture. If x, if x were to be 0, the whole thing will cease to exist. Here, in the context of the problem, because it represents the dimension of something, it cannot be 0. Which means, only possibility is that x minus 6 is equal to 0. That in turn implies that x must be, x must be 6. The question was, for what value of x, for what value of x would the pitch area of the frame would equal the area of the picture? And the answer is, when x is equal to 6. And we can clearly see why. We can clearly see why. Here we go. Because this, see this rectangle, if x is 6, if x is equal to 6, it will be 6 by 1. This is 6 by 1. This is 6 by 1. And this is 6 by 1. Which means the area of the frame is simply 6 times 4 or rather 4 times 6, there are 4 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 times 6 is 24. What about the area of the picture? Well, the area of the picture is right here. It's x times x minus 2. It was x times, right here. x times x minus 2 is right here. Let's put it here. You see right here, x, which we just found out to be 6. Which we just found out to be 6, so it's going to be 6 times 6 minus, 6 minus 2. 6 minus 2 is 4. And this is 4x. This is just 4x. So it's 4 times 6. There you go. Of course, this makes sense. 
6 times 4 minus 6 minus 2 is 4. 6 times 4, they equal. It works. This is, this, that was a quick verification of our work and we verified it. It works. The answer is 6. And that will be answer choice. That will be answer choice. Which one says 6? Answer choice C. Answer choice C. And as always, if you're interested in percentile, I'm sorry to have to report to you. I am sorry to have to report to you that fewer than half the people, fewer than half the people had luck on it. Fewer than half. More than 50% missed it. Only 46% got it right. Only 46% managed to get this question right. As you turn the page, on the next page, as we always have in this exam, in these sections, they give you four questions based on one graph. We have one graph or one chart. We have seen it consistently. Uh, this is the fourth time we are encountering it because it's our fourth section. There, are, there were two sections in the first exam that we did and then two sections in this exam. So the previous three times we encountered the same situations where they give you four questions based on a graph or a chart. And that is what we are going to encounter as we turn the page on page 494. And those four questions have to be done together because they all pertain to the same chart. We'll do them together, all four of them, 17, 18, 19 and 20. Alright, bye now.